Hey everybody, it's Joe Simpson, and boy did I walk down a rabbit hole. So let's let's talk about headphones today. So um, it, it kind of started in a strange way for me. Um, in October, I hit a deer when I was driving my car. Caused a lot of damage to my truck, put my truck in the shop. Parts were missing, back ordered, couldn't get my truck finished. So I decided to buy a car to drive around while I was waiting in my truck to be fixed. It was that bad. So I ended up buying this uh, Honda Pilot, but it didn't have any of the modern stereo radio features that you like. So it did have an aux in jack, and that's where it all started. I grabbed my iPod out of the house. I have a 60 gig iPod video, threw some music on there, ran out to my car, plugged it in the aux in jack. I was pretty happy. It sounded good. Not too long after having that jacked into my car, the uh, hard drive on the iPod video failed, which is obviously going to happen with something that's so old. Uh, the iPod video uses an old 60 gig uh, spinning platter disc thing, you know, so it's uh, destined to fail. I got online and checked out some different places. And one thing that I discovered was a company called uh, www.iflash.xyz. Check it out. They make these little... Uh, cards that insert in replacement of your hard drive for your iPod. And those cards can take either SD cards or some other type of memory. It's a solid state, which far improves the speed of your iPod, um, the battery usage, and also the capacity. So in getting my iPod refurbished, getting new battery, new, new flash card and everything in there, I wanted to start converting music. Well, I was talking to my friend and he's like, you know, I have this whole collection from college. I'd like to just convert, you know, maybe like a thousand CDs or something like that. And I said, okay, well, let me, let me convert them. Cause I'd like to acquire some more music anyway. If you don't mind me keeping the music, I rip, uh, I'll rip all your stuff, put it on a drive for you. So off to rip land, I went and I found a program to, you know, archive these CDs you know, in doing this archiving, you start paying attention to quality. What's the best way to preserve it? Do you use like a lossless codec? Do you use um, MP3? You know, what kind of compression do you use, if any? And so um, that took me to a quality concern. So in thinking about the listening devices, I knew that the iPod could only do uh, the Apple codec or they could do the MP3s. So it's fairly compressed. Now they do have an Apple lossless codec, which is excellent. Uh, but it's kind of the files are big and kind of hard to keep. So I got into another player. It's called the Surfans 20, I believe. I think it's the 20. But if you look on Amazon and you type Surfans, S-U-R-F-A-N-S, um, this player will come up. You can put in whatever size SD card right here in this slot that you want. I think the max size SD card that fits in there is 256. At least that's what they say. So here we go. This thing will play all of the high resolution, high quality. I say high resolution. It's FLAC. It's lossless codec. It'll play all the FLAC encoded archived music. And it has what's called a, you know, a high quality DAC. A DAC is a digital audio converter. And it's a, it takes the music that's digital and converts it to audio. It comes to your headphones. Um, the iPod video or the iPod uh, classic had a very good DAC for the time and it still sounds nice. And then the Surfans has even a, a higher resolved, better quality DAC, I think, than the old iPod. It's, it's all subjective, you know, to your ear. But anyway, it's got a good DAC. That led me to how do, how do I know what I'm listening to out of this player sounds as good as it could sound because I don't even know if the headphones I have are any good. Well, here you go. So I start doing some research and I start going from earbuds to what they call IEMs, which are earbuds. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm going to offend all these audiophile people. IEMs, in-ear monitors is what it's called. It's like a little acronym. Now, they're fancier. They go in a different way. They loop around your, your head. But IEMs, earbuds, kind of the same thing to me, just a little bit of design difference. Um, and obviously the IEMs are going to be focused more on sound quality. The earbuds might be focused on, uh, sport, working out, running, jogging, you know, they might have like applications that they're designed for rather than just pure audio focus. So I get it. I get the IEM thing, but it's still weird to me. They're all kind of, I'll show you in a minute. You'll see what I'm talking about. And then I got into cans. Cans is what they call 
uh, over ear headphones. Um, because I remember when I was younger listening to, you go to the library, you put some headphones on, you get a record, you play the record, you listen to it. And I remember thinking, I used to like the way that sounded. Um, and the reason I'm not going like all audiophile um, speaker stuff and amps and all that in my house is because I did that for a long time. I did towers. I did, you know, Pioneer Elite amplifiers. I did, you know, the Blu-ray players and all the fancy audio players and stuff. And I just never had the time to come down to one place and one space and sit. And, and I didn't have the ability to crank it because, you know, my wife is like, dude, you got to turn that down. It's terrible. I wanted something that I could listen to many places, listen to personally, and something that wasn't super expensive. So that brought me to a good audio player and a good set of headphones or IEMs or cans or whatever. Let me walk you through visually. It went from the iPod video, which I still have, and it's upgraded, and I love it. Um, that's my kind of catch-all, take anywhere, do anything. And then it went to the Surfans player, which is higher quality. A lot of people complain about the controls compared to the iPod, but I've actually come to like this, I think, better. When I first had my iPod back in, I don't know, 2000, whatever, when that thing came out, I bought some expensive headphones, $79. They were the Sennheiser CX300s. Loved them, earbuds. Um, used them, loved them. They were great. Now I have the new and improved version of the Sennheiser CX300 earbuds. They still sound great. If you stopped at an upgraded iPod and a set of Sennheiser CX300s, you're 85 to 90% there, in my opinion. It's, it's great. It sounds awesome. There's really not much of a reason to have anything better. There's a lot of reasons to not like some of the things about it, but honestly, from a musical standpoint, it's excellent. Looking at the IEM world, and I think listening to a guy named Critical, he seems to be the premier expert on most of that stuff. All right, this is called an IEM, okay? And the way this thing works is it goes in your ear, and the body of it kind of blocks out the sound, and that little loop goes behind your ear. It's a little bit of a aerobics exercise the first time you put it in there. So you got to get the thing in your ear. <laughs> I could still not do it one-handed. So I see these guys do it like in two seconds. I'm like, I don't know how they have the dexterity. Okay, so this thing goes in your ear. It looks like this. You've probably seen musicians when they're playing guitars, and they do music videos and stuff of them live on stage. They use these to monitor the sound of their instruments and block out the sound of the band so they can hear what they're doing and how they're playing. Or they listen to the mix, you know, to see how everything's sounding. These are special because when you look at in-ear monitors, they can go $300,000, $400,000, dollars $500,000. These are 20 bucks. Listen to the people on the internet because they know. This is the Sal Notes Zero dynamics. This is the box they come in. They're very inexpensive. They cost $20. A little bit pronounced in the female vocals. And when, when we say this, when you hear people saying a little pronounced here, a little pronounced there, we're talking nuances. We're not talking like, oh, it's really loud in the female vocals and it's not in the male. It doesn't mean that. It means like Adele sounds really forward and nice and just robust on those headphones. Whereas Lyle Love It sounds just normal. They both sound great, but it just, that's kind of a characteristic. I wouldn't put a lot of stock in the characteristics that people say online about the headphones other than just try to get a feel, like a, think of it as a not good and bad, but a um, different type of thing. Anyway, those are 20 bucks. Those sound excellent. These right here. Holy cow. This is the... Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro. This is probably as good a headphone as I'll ever buy right here. I don't think I'll buy another because for my purposes and my listening, this is perfect. Um, it's got excellent extension and bass, goes way down. It has good punch on you know the drums. It's got really good mids and really articulate highs. Some people say they're a little spicy in the high end. Um, and some people say that mids are a little subdued, but that's actually kind of how 
I like my stuff tuned. So they're perfect for me. And don't forget on these devices, you have an EQ. So you can push and pull sound around a little bit with headphones and make it sound exactly the way you want. So don't think you're going to get a set of headphones and say, I, I'm going to do nothing and they're perfect. Some, some are perfect. Like these, I don't, I don't mess with them for me. They're good enough. These guys right here, these guys have a little bit of a, a high-end bias. So what I do sometimes is I'll just go into this little device and I'll, I'll bump up the extended bass frequencies, you know, a couple decibels, and I'll just knock a little off the top end and that, that smooths them out right to where I want them to be. So they sound perfect. The difference is between in-ear earbud IEMs versus cans. So if you think about what's happening, the cans have bigger drivers and they're outside of your ear. And vibrations from these drivers is what makes the sound that goes into your ear that you perceive. In-ear sits right next to and deep down into your canal of your ear, so they're closer to your eardrum, so it's a whole different experience. It doesn't sound that different, but what you get is, I think, better spatial separation in a can than you would in in in-ear, I think. These cans, I think, are special because usually open back meaning that headphones that don't have an enclosed hard case, but they're like just open back. So people outside can hear the things that are playing on your headphones. Usually people say those are the most spacious, most wide soundstage that you get from a headphone. These I think are unique because they give you a similar wide soundstage, but they're closed back. So that's one of the attributes people love about these. These are 139 bucks. So that's the most expensive yeah, that's the most expensive thing I've bought in gear. And I think that's if you're going to sink money into something, sink it into the headphones first. I'm not going to go down the technicalities of which headphones and what ohms and all the different things because it's very technical. And I'm not going to get into graphs and curves and stuff because you're probably here to just kind of get a feel of what's going down. These are excellent. These I would sit in a chair, plug into one of my players lose myself, lay back, really like listen to a CD, like track one to track 10, not skip anything. Just, just, they're excellent. They're really, really awesome. Um, I like my iPod with my smaller CX 300 earbuds. I like those next to my bed because I don't want cans when I'm laying on the pillow, even though these are really comfortable to lay on things. You just can't turn your head sideways. Um, the earbuds from the iPod is good because the iPod I can control kind of in the dark and not have to look at it with the click wheel. I've learned it so well. The only thing I don't like about the CX-300s, those little earbuds that were from the original, is they have a lot of uh, cable noise. So when the cable bounces around against your shirt, it, it transmits right through the speaker really loudly, actually. But if I want to like get high-resolution sound and I really want to like tweak the sound, maybe do the EQ a little bit, um, the Surfans 20 is probably my go-to listening device because I can plug these headphones right into it. And this has a high gain mode, which makes these play a little louder um, because these take a little bit of juice. I like it for these uh, Sol Notes Zeros because I can tweak the EQ and it doesn't seem to destroy the music profile when you tweak the EQ. Like on the iPod, if you hit like bass boost, sometimes it makes things sound like crap. So I leave uh, the iPod flat, but I'll tweak this to get the right sound from the Sol Notes. As a recap, I use my iPod with my CX-300s as my kind of go-to utility knife listener. It's great because I can jam like a ton of music on here. And with that new battery, it lasts for a couple of days. Um, if I want to go high resolution, higher quality, if I'm moving around the kitchen and I'm cooking and I don't want to be dealing with like cables in my way and stuff like that, I'll put the sound notes in here and um, plug this in, tuck it in my shirt. But if I'm just sitting in a recliner and I want to really chill to some really high quality music, I'll use this with these headphones. Or if I'm down at my computer and I'm doing some work and I really want to have an experience, <laughs> I'll pipe this through my amplifier, my amplifier into my headphones. So it's a lot, I know. This is 130 bucks. These are 130 bucks. So for under $300, you have some really high grade listening capabilities right here. This will play DSD audio. FLAC, MP3, AAC. I mean, you if you've got a utility knife uh, compression type to throw at this, try it. I think it'll play it all. This is going to play MP3, AAC, and Apple Lossless. 
and this is really good if you're just dedicated Apple. This is fine. I mean, you don't need anything much more than that if that's what you're into. I wouldn't spend a lot of time trying a bunch of different like earbuds, honestly. I would just go online, figure out which ones are being described to play the way you want to hear them play. You know, if people say these are really bassy or these don't have that much bass, well, take their word because when they say they don't have much bass, I've done that. I've bought headphones going, oh, they're full of it. They just don't know what they're listening to. And then I get them. I'm like, wow, these don't have much bass. <laughs> so it's like, just listen to the people. They'll, they'll tell you kind of the nuances of it. These have great bass extension. They have great, you know, kick drum punch. But what you get in these is these are so much more accurate than the others. They give you a better spatial sense of where the music is and where the instruments are. And you're going to get um, tonality in the bass. It's really hard to explain. Like when you take a drumstick and you hit a drum, not only are you getting that, that pop or that punch of whatever noise that drum makes, but you're also getting the intonation of that drumstick and the sound that it makes when it hits the, the, the drum surface. Like there's like a, a, a resonance or a frequency even to that. And you can hear those little nuances and you don't really realize it at first until one day you're listening and you're really focusing in on the music. You're trying to envision the stuff being played. And all of a sudden you just hear something that almost feels visual and you're going, wow, that's really detailed. That's really like way more than I thought I could get out of a set of headphones. And um, that's where I think these come into play and I'm not describing it well. I'm not a very good audiophile. I can just say these are stupendously great. These are awesome. And if you get anything, like if you have an iPod and it's working fine and you have music on it, buy these, you know, plug it into your iPod. If you have a player with a little higher resolution, buy these, always buy these first, but um, the Sound Note Zero and the CX300s, those are good. Those are really good. Um, and they're, for most people, they'd be fine. But it, it's just really hard to say what's right for everybody. I kind of like the fact that these don't have something poking down in my ear canal because some people get ear fatigue and soreness from that. Also, these get a little warm, so it feels like you have earmuffs. Super comfortable. I didn't even mention, like, these feel so comfortable that it's hard to explain how comfortable. They just get a little warm. This is like a velour terry cloth type thing. And what my friend mentioned who has glasses is he said, you know, the thing I like about these is they tend to fit over his glasses and hits his bars of his glasses and doesn't seem to like tilt them wonky. He says he puts his bows or some of his Sony's on and it like pushes his glasses sideways. These just kind of go over whatever's there. Like this is over my hat. It Part of my hat's in it. Part of my hat's not in it. Feels fine. Um, but if you don't want any like interaction with your glasses or things like that, then you might want to go with like the, uh, the IEMs or the earbuds. Keep it simple. I think your headphones should be approached just like you do a hi-fi audio system. Most people, I think, say the most important thing in your audiophile system that's not headphones is your speakers. Second to that is going to be your amplifier. And then beyond that, all the auxiliary things that play stuff, that's great. But if you have a great amplifier and great speakers, you're going to have a great system. Start with the speakers, the headphones. Then worry about the amplification and the input. A little different than a hi-fi audio system is the player and the amplifier sometimes are kind of one and the same, so you can't really parse them out. But you can buy an auxiliary amp for your headphones, which does improve the sound, the dynamics, and some of the liveliness to the music. But start with a really good player and a really good set of cans or a really good set of IEMs, and I think you can't go wrong. None of these headphones that I've mentioned have noise canceling, which I'm not against it. It just They just don't. They don't really need it. These block out so much noise, and the noise uh, just stays out. The IEMs, since they have such that a big body and it kind of sits in your ear exterior, that, that naturally is a you know noise cancellation device. The CX300's uh, buds, those silicone tips are so good, they block just about everything. Now, I do have one set of Bluetooth Tozo NC2. They're cheap. It sounds technical, but they're inexpensive. They're 39 bucks. The Tozo NC2, I don't have them here to show you. They're just earbuds. They're black. They look just like the Apple earbuds, except uh, they're black. You can get them in white, I believe, too. But the good thing about the Surfans is it has a Bluetooth capability. So you can have this device 
and the Tozo NC2s. So if you were a guy who said, you know what, Joe, I hate wires. I don't want any wires. I can't stand it. The Tozo NC2 in this is really, really good. And the Tozo NC2s have noise canceling. So that's something to consider. You know, if you can afford it, maybe you get a couple scenarios. You get a device and a couple set of headphones. You got your cans for your recliner and you got your IEMs for walking around the kitchen cooking and you might have your Bluetooths for your jog. You know what I mean? So there are reasons to have more than one. But if you said, hey, Joe, I just want one thing that can do sport and hang out. And the Tozo NC2s, you know, those, those are really good. You know, you could get those. Now you're going to lose, I think, a little bit of that audiophile fidelity perfection, but it does, they do sound really good and they do have a healthy amount of bass. It's a little bass biased and it's really high in the treble. But like I say, you can tone it down with your EQing and make them just right. They, they sound sweet. Um, I'm surprised I didn't bring them up earlier because those are actually pretty good. The Tozo NC2s, uh, Bluetooth. So I forgot to mention, you know, when I do walks and stuff. I, I Lately, I've been wearing the wired uh, IEMs, and I just stick them under my shirt, and they, they do great. But the Tozo NC2 Bluetooth is awesome. I usually use the Tozos for my phone, like when I'm working. So I'll be listening to music, walking through Home Depot or Lowe's, and then somebody will call. I can touch them and take a call. So they're convenient for that. They're more of an all-purpose but if you really want to go down the sound quality rabbit hole, um, you could start with an older iPod and up- upgrade it. I would say get get the cans first. I honestly think get the cans first because you're going to really enjoy it. And then from the cans, use this as your reference point when you buy these other things. Now, remember, when you buy this stuff on Amazon, you can return it if you don't like it. Um, so don't be afraid to buy some stuff and try it and send it back and get some other stuff. So. Anyway, that's my 10 cents on headphones. I hope that wasn't like too scatterbrained, but uh, honestly, start with a good player, iPod or one of these surf fans, get some cans or IEMs and try it out. You don't have to spend a lot. You can get the uh, Sal Note Zeros for 20 bucks, or you could get these for 130 bucks. You could spend more, but honestly, this is where I stopped. I don't think I'm going any higher than that. And uh, the CX-300s, those actually were more than the Sound Note Zero. So actually, the Sound Notes, I think, are the best buy of the bunch for quality versus price. But it's, it's you know, kind of a thing. You know, I'm not sure if you're going to like the wire behind the ear and the thing. It, they're fine. They're comfortable. But not like these. These are Mac Daddy. And, uh, but, the, like, all those beats and sound sources and sound cores and Bluetooth this and noise canceling that. And just don't get lost in it all. Stick to some good cans with some wires get reference quality audio, then you can move out to the other stuff as you need it to solve different problems. But you don't necessarily have to chase down good audio anymore because you'll have it right here. Anyway, you guys take care. Have a good weekend. Hope this helped you think through some things. I'll see you later.